And it says Leonard Skinner. Linda says toss up for me between Aerosmith and Queen. Joe says Led Zeppelin. That's my honey. He's got a tattoo of Led Zeppelin on his arm. So I would hope that would be his favorite. Beverly says the Eagles. Nikki says Metallica. I've seen Metallica quite a few times in concert as well. And Larissa says the Eagles. So mostly some uh, old timers, some classic stuff. You know, I got to throw in my Tay Tay too. I found out yesterday Taylor Swift going to be on Good Morning America August 22nd. It's a Thursday. Going to do a concert in Central Park. And I'm going to head on up to New York. I'm going to catch me a a quick Taylor Swift show. I don't know how close I'll get, but this is going to be probably my only chance to see Taylor Swift because I will not pay $300 for a ticket to go see Taylor Swift. So I'm going to go. And I'm excited about it. A little day trip to to the city. It's going to be a good time. So I'm going to move on now to the blog post. Like I said, we've been talking about changing your perception all week. Can you change your perception? It's simple. As I always like to say, it's simple, not easy, but the process is simple. So I put up a couple of pictures from my favorite show of all time, Gilmore Girls with Lorelai talking to her mother, Emily. Now, Emily was all in a tizzy because her mother-in-law was coming to visit, and her mother-in-law is terribly mean to her, criticizes her constantly, and she was freaking out. And Lorelai was like, okay, Mom, here's the secret. One day I decided that instead of being hurt and upset by your disapproval, I'm going to be amused by it. So that stops Emily in her tracks, and she's like, you take pleasure in my disapproval? And Lorelai says, with a smile, I encourage it sometimes just for a laugh. That's right. She changed her perception. Her mom disapproved of her life, of the way she lived her life, of the way she dresses, of the way she decorates her house, of everything. And I thought that this scene kind of summed up the family dynamic or any dynamic where people are criticizing you and judging you in a mean kind of way. So what's great about this show is, and if you've listened to me, you know I'm a huge fan, the essence of the show is about the very difficult relationship between Lorelai and her mother, Emily. Meanwhile, Lorelai has an amazing friendship relationship with her own daughter, who she had at only 16 years of age. And Lorelai has struggled with the constant disapproval from her mother. And she's had to stay in her life for the sake of her daughter. So, this is a television show. Obviously much easier said than done. But it can be done. I, unfortunately, was never able to do it with my own mother. But hopefully you can learn from my mistakes and do better. Um... In the example at the top of the blog post, like I said, Lorelai just decided not to let it bother her anymore. She realized her mother was never going to change. She had to have a relationship with her for the sake of her own daughter. So she literally let her mother's disapproval roll off her back. Not only roll off her back, she just kind of got a giggle out of it. It can be that simple. Not easy, but simple. And we all have people in our lives, unfortunately, that are difficult to deal with. Whether it be a family member, friend, or coworker. The worst is when people judge you and your decisions right to your face, which tends to happen a lot more than you would think. At least it does to me. Something that might help is to think about why this person is so difficult. Are they jealous of you? Are they resentful of the fact that you do things exactly the way you want to? Do they have someone holding them back from the kind of life they really want to live? Try looking at it from the other person's point of view. Now, it doesn't excuse their behavior, but it can help you understand it a little bit better. When people are rude, it really is a reflection of them and not of you. I know we've all heard this before. We let it go in one ear and out the other, but let that sit a little bit. It's so true. When people are rude to you, it's a reflection of them, not you. When my uh, comes to my former partner, I believe... He was jealous of the connection I had with our listeners. This is just what I think. He used to make comments that I was the star of the show. It was not something that I orchestrated. I was just myself. I opened up my life to listeners and said how I really felt about things, 
even controversial things, things that I knew people would disagree with me on and get mad at me about. He, however, was afraid of offending people, never talked about his personal life. He was fear, fearful of being judged. So, like I said, I used to get a lot of flack for my views. I would often get emails and texts from people disagreeing with me and even getting angry with me. I was talking one time, I always, always remember this, I was talking one time about the plastic bag ban that we had here in our town, and I was on the air talking about it the one day and how I'm not in favor of it. I properly dispose of my plastic bags, and the thing that I had an issue with the most is they just banned bags. And the day before the bag ban, you could get a paper bag from the grocery store for free, but now it's going to cost you five or ten cents to buy a paper bag the next day when the bag ban went into place. So if you don't think that these people are making money off of this, you're crazy because they are. My issue is, was always if I'm purchasing 100 items at your store, it's your responsibility to give me a container to put them in. Don't tell me I need to bring my own. Is it a big deal that I bring my own? Not really, but why should I? I'm spending all of this money at your store. The least you can do is give me a container. Give me a brown paper bag. Give me some other bag or container that I can put it in in my all my groceries and take it home with me. Like I said, it doesn't seem like a big deal, but what if, you know, what if you went to a fancy restaurant and you had to bring your own napkin? It's the same thing in my mind. So I'm going on and on about this on the air one day, and a regular listener started texting me back and forth, and she, she was mad. She's like, you don't get it. You don't get it. And finally, I just said, I do get it. I just don't agree. That's okay. We don't have to agree. And after that, she kind of was like, yeah, okay, all right, yeah, all right. I, 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 now that I know you understand, I, I, you're, you're right, you're right. And it, it really, that's we agree to disagree. It's okay. You can have your opinion on it. You can think I'm a lazy, cheap slob for wanting to use single plastic use bags, and I don't care about the environment. That's not the case, but you can think that about me. I properly dispose of my bags. I use them to clean up dog poop, and then I toss them in the trash can. I don't throw them in the way, in the water. I don't throw them in the bay and in the ocean. I don't let them fly out of my hand. And, you know, I just, I'm not going to get into all this, although I already have. All right, I'm getting down off of my um, my soapbox now. So, back to my partner. I think that he didn't want to take the risk of being disliked like I did, uh, but people didn't really get a chance to know him either. I tried to explain this to him, and I think he understood, but was still unwilling to put himself on the line because he didn't want to be judged by other people. So, okay, I get it. If you don't want to take the risk, you don't get the reward. But he was jealous of me for getting the reward without having to take the risk. He didn't want to take the risk, but was jealous of my reward. I took the risk. Now, it was frustrating that even though I knew he understood all this, he still held it against me. (laughs) But, you know, there's only so much you can do. I was myself. I won't apologize for that. Some people like me. Some people don't. Do you have a family member who's always making snide comments about you and how you live your life? These are people you will have to deal with from time to time. But it may be easier to take if you just remind yourself that you are who you are and you won't apologize for that. Even if you think you're difficult when it comes to certain things, you have to live for you and not worry about how it affects other people. Now, don't be one of the mean people I'm talking about. Like, don't be a jerk, but you do you. I imagine I can be pretty difficult to live with. I am controlling. I like to have my own way. I'm pretty opinionated, among other things. And I often thought, maybe I won't ever get married because it probably is tough to find someone willing to put up with me. But guess what? I did find someone that's not only willing to put up with me, but someone who is perfectly content to let me be me. He's not always happy about it, but content, I think, is the right word. Granted, it takes a special kind of person to put up with me, and I feel very grateful that I found him. But you can find someone who is perfect for you, just like I did, being just yourself. Now, since I said some detrimental 
qualities about myself, I'm going to come back and reinforce them with some positive qualities about myself. Yes, I am controlling. Yes, I like to have my own way. Yes, I am opinionated, but I'm very loyal, very hardworking. I'm very truthful. And I go out of my way to make sure that my husband is happy and to be an exceptional wife. I do the same with my friends. I try to be there for them, to give them things that I think that they will enjoy. I try to make their life a little bit better. So that's some of the good in me because there's a little bit of good in all of us. It's okay to know both sides of it. I encourage you to know both sides of it. So when I get down on myself for all the disappointing relationships I've had in my life with family members, coworkers, friends, and trust me, there's been a lot of disappointments. I remind myself that I have an amazing man that loves me just as I am. That can help me let others' opinions roll off my back. He is the most important person in my life. Well, him and Tucker. Him and Tucker are both okay with me and my personality traits, so I am good. And so are you. Don't be a mean person, but be you. It is Cocktail Friday. We made it to the freaking weekend. Now go out there and be your true badass self. Have a fantastic weekend. Be safe in whatever you do. And as always, make it your best day yet. Thank you for listening to The Hopeless, hosted by Wendy McClure. For more inspiration, please visit Hopefulist.com. Thanks, and we'll see you tomorrow on The Hopefulist. Hopefulist.